Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee, and I want to spend some time and talk to you about audio system design for your Harley, specifically for rider systems, and I get the same calls over and over asking what is the best system to put on my bike? What's the best layout? Where should I put speakers? And what am I going to get when I do that? I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people out there with the wrong information or maybe the wrong ideas. I want to clarify some of those as we go through this series. So continue to watch, and I'm going to tell you how to get the best sound for you out of your Harley. So I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start with some very basic information. And the first thing is your factory Harley Davidson speakers are terrible. That's why you're watching this video. That's why you're thinking about upgrading because when you go down the road, you cannot hear your audio. And now you can go into the forums and the groups and you can ask, what's the best speaker to put in my bike? And what you're probably going to get told is a hundred different answers because the truth is there are a lot of companies that make a lot of good speakers. There's quite a few options for your Harley. And at Volunteer Audio, us being independent retailers, we do a lot of research and we pick what we feel is the best for our customers. And we're blessed that a lot of you actually follow along with us and you trust our recommendations. And so we do a lot of business and so therefore we get to talk to a lot of you. So I wanna share with you some information from years of doing this, from tons and tons of installs and talking to so many people that I think will help you hopefully spend the money one time to get the system you're after. But the first thing I wanna tell you is anything you do it's gonna be better than this. All right, so let's start talking about what we are gonna do in our Harley. And I'm gonna be a little bit vague and we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of Harley models at the same time because we just don't have enough time in this series and you're not gonna to listen to all of it if I break it down by every single model. So I'm gonna start talking about our standard touring bikes. That would be your road glides, electric glides, street glides, the ultras. And we're gonna talk about those models and what we need to do to get better sound out of them. And the first step's always gonna to be to start with our speakers and our fairing. And if you want significant volume increase, which is the number one thing we know people want, we wanna hear it while we're riding. And, and I wanna back up and tell you again, this series is about rider systems. This is not about competition audio. There's a whole bunch of different rules that go into place for comp bikes that have nothing to do with how you're gonna do the system on your rider bike. So if this is, if you're trying to figure out more information about competition bikes, that's not me. There's other channels for that. There are guys that do a great job of it. And some of the things we're gonna go over, there are people who do other methods that also do a great job of building systems. They just have other ways of doing it. I wanna to explain to you, hopefully in something that makes sense, why we do it the way we do it, Volunteer Audio. So we're gonna start at the front of our bike and we're gonna install an amplifier where it should go. We think the first place you should put an amplifier should be in the fairing. You're not gonna lose any room there by putting it in the tour pack or by putting it in a rear bag. We're adding disconnects that don't have to be there and we're taking space that we could do something else with. So we're gonna to try to find a really good quality amplifier. We're gonna put it in our fairing and we're gonna build it completely plug and play. Whether we're using a factory radio or we're running maybe one of the Soundstream upgraded radios, we're gonna make sure that our amp is plug and play for that. We're not cutting up the wine in the bike. We're not voiding warranties and we're not causing future failure points. Now I wanna tell you, when you're looking at amplifiers, a good portion of what you're paying for is all the harnessing it takes to do it right, the time to set it up right. And the actual cost from one amp to another is not a lot of money. So a lot of times you'll find a very little increase will give you a lot more power when it comes to your amplifier portion of your bike. Now, if you're using a factory radio, we're always going to flash that radio. And it's gonna do four things at once. We're gonna fix the terrible EQ that's in it from the factory that has a bass boost that none of these speakers wanna play without distorting. We're also gonna make it where the EQ doesn't change while we're riding down the road. We're gonna attenuate the radio down to where it's a good usable input for our amplifier. And then we're also gonna turn on the rear channel. So if you don't already have a limited or an ultra model with rear speakers from the factory, the rear channels aren't turned on. So we're gonna do that in the flash. And you gotta do that. If you're not flashing your radio, with the exception of the Hogtune slash Kenwood systems, they don't require a flash. We went over that in other videos. Don't flash those or it won't work. All other systems, you need to flash it because it's gonna give you a better, cleaner input signal and your overall system is gonna be clearer. It's gonna go louder and you're gonna be less likely to blow speakers. That's with stock radio. 
even if we're doing a soundstream radio or factory, we're gonna go high level into our amp. We're not gonna run RCA. Your motorcycle has a ton of electrical noise. The stator is kind of dirty, ground points aren't great, and even though we run everything back to the battery, LED lights emit noise, oxygen sensor uh, uh, adapters can emit noise. Uh, there's all sorts of things that can introduce noise to RCAs. An RCA level is so low that it's gonna pick up that noise and you're gonna amplify it so much that it's gonna make whining and hissing and noises we don't wanna hear that are audible while we're listening to our speakers. Now, I will tell you, in every system, you're gonna have something called floor noise. If you pause a track, if you mute the radio and the amp is gained up, you're gonna hear a little bit of electrical noise that should not be audible when, you're, when you have any speakers playing. So that's pretty normal of just about any system of any brand. And all of this, like I say, is a little vague and a little bit out there. But I wanna talk about speaker design and how to get the best mid bass and the best full sound out of a system without necessarily adding a subwoofer. And the reason I'm going here is we know you all want the bass that a big, powerful subwoofer system would do. But we also know most of you don't want to spend the budget. I mean, a really nice set of subs, properly sealed, ported, and amplified, that's a five, $6,000 or more expenditure. On top of that, it's going to take a lot of room that most people do not want to give up. And again, this is rider systems, not comp systems. Comp bikes are going to have stretched bags, huge airspace, multiple batteries, tons of power, and they're going to run multiple subwoofers to give you that oh wow base on those bikes. But remember, they're not planning on riding them. They're not storing things and they're not going on long road trips where they need that storage. So therefore, it's a completely different set of rules. So once we've got a good amplifier mounted in the fairing where it should go, properly powered, we're opening up some things that are gonna work much better. So we get the call all the time where somebody goes, I wanna do a system and I'm thinking of four speakers. And a lot of times they have this idea, idea that they wanna do lowers. Now I'm kind of skipping the uppers because really at a minimum, we know we're increasing or replacing our upper speakers. And I'll go into a little bit more of that while we get into the four speaker part. But so many people call me and they say, hey, I wanna do a set of lowers on my bike because I think lowers are gonna give me a better sound because of where they're at. And I understand God gave you two ears and something pointed at your ears is louder. But I will tell you when you properly amp your system, when everything is set right, you're gonna have far more sound from the two speakers than you really need. Once we get it loud enough that we're louder than the engine and louder than the wind at 100 miles an hour, and you can hear all of this with a full face helmet on, we really don't need more volume because any volume above that, we're just being detrimental to our ears, we're hurting our hearing, we're making it harder to talk to people when we get off the bike. So I don't normally like lowers, and, and I'll go further into this, I don't need more volume on our systems because we use great speakers that go very, very loud and we properly amplify them. By adding lower speakers, you do add more volume, but the thing you'd never add is more bass and it's due to enclosure design. If I were to take a speaker like this and I hook it up and I play it sitting here on the table, it's gonna produce quite a bit of treble and higher frequencies, but we're not gonna get any low end response till we drop it into an enclosure. Now our fairing has a good size enclosure for what it is. It's about as much as Harley could fit and it gives us pretty good bass response or mid bass response or fullness and sound for what it is. Now our lowers always have less airspace. So our lower speaker never generates as much mid-range as our upper fairing speaker. We also, in a lot of cases, we're doing liquid cooled lowers with radiators and it's vented to the atmosphere. So when you have a vented pod that's small, you really don't generate any mid-range. So what's left over though is high range and vocals. And so we're gonna add vocals and we're gonna add more treble. And when you do that to a set of uppers, what you end up having is a system that overall has a higher pitched frequency. Oh yeah, it's loud but loud isn't always good. We want loud that makes it enjoyable and you wanna go through your entire playlist. So now there are some scenarios where like an RG3, or maybe there's some scenarios with triglides, uh, maybe you've removed your tour pack and you don't have a place to put rear speakers. And, and there are some companies making some, uh, some ways of adding rears. When we're gonna do lowers and we're not doing rears, we definitely wanna limit the treble. So you'll see over and over, we'll use a mid-range speaker slash mid bass speaker. I don't wanna call it just a mid range because mid ranges generally don't go play low at all. These speakers do really well. They'll play in the 65 Hertz range, which is really good for a speaker this size. We're gonna limit that treble because we don't wanna add more treble because there's only so much bass your upper speakers can play, your lower speakers can play. This is from any brand. Nobody has a magical speaker that plays a bunch of bass from a, turf, uh, from a upper pod 
or from a lower. We have to make our enclosures bigger for these speakers to be able to generate more bass. So the way our ears work, when we hear more treble, we hear less bass. So we want to limit the amount of treble in our lowers to try to give us a better sound. Now you'll see over and over we do a lot of four speaker builds and normally we're going to do one of two things. We're going to do tour pack speakers or we're going to do lid speakers. We're doing that because the enclosure size of our bag with a set of six by nines mounted in a cutting kit or the enclosure size of our tour pack with our speakers ported into that tour pack gives us really good mid-range response. Our front speakers have a good bright tweeter. They have a lot of clarity so that we have that volume we need and the clarity we need to overcome wind and engine at highway speeds, 70, 80 miles an hour. Our rear speakers are there to help out in the parts that the front doesn't do well. So you're gonna find that our six by nines, they don't have a real bright tweeter on purpose. They're here to generate mid-range and more bass. So they're never gonna stand out over your front speakers, but when properly mounted in a cut kit like this one, and you'll notice when it's in the lid, it's actually angled towards you. We're using a cut kit. A lot of the aftermarket lids are gonna fire them straight up. We don't like aftermarket lids. We love cutting kits for many, many reasons. But by using a six by nine in the back that's not real bright and it generates more bass and it uses that enclosure of that bag, it's gonna give you that fullness. It's gonna give you enveloping surround sound. So we're gonna have sound from behind. We're gonna have mid bass we need to blend with that front speaker. And overall, our system starts to sound a lot better. So not only is it loud, it's now more enjoyable to listen to. Now, if you have a tour pack and you run a set of SVs in it, again, like we would have done in a lower, we'll run an SV that doesn't have a tweeter, but I'll tell you, you're gonna generate a lot more fullness and sound from a tour pack than you ever would a lower. And I love the sound that these speakers have in a tour pack, and it makes it awesome. When they're properly amplified, you're gonna hear the rear speakers great. They're gonna add the mid-range that you're missing, and it's gonna make that front speaker blend with it to give you a great sounding system. In my absolute favorite systems, when we do the tour pack, and the six by nines. If you're gonna do six speakers, I never, ever, ever recommend doing lowers in a six speaker system. I think you ought to do uppers, lids, and tour pack. That's gonna give you the two things people ask for more than anything. I wanna be able to hear more of my rear speakers and I wanna have more bass without using space. These two things give you that. They both give you better bass, they both give you more rear fill, and with four speakers in the back, it is beautiful. It sounds like you've added a small sub or a small mid-range speaker that is firing toward your tire and you've powered it properly just by adding speakers where we're not gonna lose space. All of these pointed at, you're gonna hear it a lot better. So let's talk about the truth of subwoofers. Subwoofers are for showing off. They're really there for Friday night, you're at the bike event, you want people to come up and ooh and ah and wow on your bike, but I understand subwoofers going down the road dissipate very quickly. The faster you go, the less you hear them. And it takes a lot of money spent on subs to make them loud enough that you can hear them well at highway speeds, like a ridiculous amount of money and a lot of power. There's some people that do that really, really well, but you're gonna spend 10,000 plus on a system. We know most people aren't gonna go there on their bike. So I think the best thing to do instead of a sub is to do a set of six by nines and a set of six and a half to give you the rear fill that you're looking for, to give you the mid base you're looking for, that really awesome sound in conjunction with a set of fronts. It's gonna be louder than your ears can handle. It's gonna sound beautiful. And I would tell you, if you're thinking about doing lowers, invest that money in the tour pack speakers, invest that money in the lid speakers and do that for your six speaker. Now the next things are eight speaker systems. A lot of people want to do eight speakers and I like the look of lowers. I like the, if you've already got a set of liquid cooled lowers on your ultra limited or road glide limited, I think it looks really nice when we add a set of speakers in them. And so many of you request that, but understand when you add them, you're adding more high range. You're adding more mid range. You are not adding any more low range. So the overall tone of your system is going to become more higher pitched. And depending on the radio you have, if you got one of the Soundstream radios, which has a great EQ in it, you can cut some of the treble down and you can make yourself probably happier with that. Uh, but when you're using a stock radio, you don't have a lot of EQ adjustment. And you really, to try to make yourself happy, you're gonna spend more money. You're gonna buy a DSP, so you can cut treble down on speakers that you really didn't have to add. And I would tell you, instead of adding lowers and then adding a DSP to make it sound like you don't have lowers, I just wouldn't put the lowers in the mix. It's gonna save you some money. Uh, and it's gonna end up with a better end result. Now we're gonna start offering an optional DSP for people with stock radios that want more EQ adjustment. We're building the Hertz S8 DSP into a lot of our amp kits, and we're gonna have some preset tunes that you can download and load into it, and that's coming soon. But I would tell you, first and foremost, the most important thing is we can get an amazing sounding system without a DSP. 
but we got to think about system design and we got to think about what you're listening to. And that brings me to my next point. The reason we're so worried about how much treble we have is most people that ride a Harley listen to very limited genres of music. I don't want to put everybody in one box and, and I know there are people of all age groups, of all sizes, of all music backgrounds and genres that ride Harleys, but the bulk of them are between 45 and 65 in age and most of them listen to classic music. And the bulk of what we hear here, with people that come in, is classic rock, 80s rock, 90s rock, hair band music. That's what they're listening to more often than anything else. Now, there are some of you that are listening to R&B, some are listening to jazz, some listen to pop. Modern country is a big one too, but the majority listen to that classic music of some sort. And those old recordings pre-CD, if it was originally recorded to record or eight track, or cassette, you don't have a lot of bass, you have a lot of treble, and you hair band rock guys, man, they got like 20 cymbals on the uh, the drum set, they're doing a guitar riff on the bottom string, and it can be very bright. And the more power we put behind speakers and the more speakers we add, you realize that treble can actually become a very annoying sound while you're riding your bike. So we're gonna try to limit the amount of treble and tweeters we have in our system. And that brings me to this point. So many of you have been told that your system's gonna be louder, that it's gonna sound better by adding these. Now this is a great speaker. This is a Hertz ST25K Neo. It's a horn tweeter, it's a compression horn tweeter. And compression horn tweeters are extremely loud. If you're doing a competition style bike and you wanna get everybody's attention, you want a bunch of horns because they're gonna hear it from forever away. The problem is when it's up close to you, it is just excruciatingly bright. And it's so loud that your ears won't hear your mid bass in most scenarios. The only time that we think these work well, number one is when you have spent the money and you have subwoofers and the subwoofers are evening out the extra treble you have. Second to that is when you put a DSP in place and you add a second amplifier to run your horns so that you can control the level of these. They don't need as much power to begin with, so the second amp's gonna give them less power, but we're also gonna take the DSP and control them down to where you still hear your mid bass. Now, with that being said, I don't do that a lot. I don't do that because I don't know why I would sell you a $400 set of tweeters and a second amp and a DSP to make the treble the same that it is in one of these speakers. On top of that, these are much easier to blow than a traditional tweeter like we have in our Hertz SX165s or SX200s. This tweeter is gonna handle more abuse. It's not gonna blow like this tweeter would. Now these are rebuildable, but I see no reason in putting an extra thousand dollars in your system to make it sound like we just put a set of speakers with a good tweeter in the middle of it. So you're not gonna see that in a lot of our designs and we get questioned about that a lot, but so many of you buy a speaker that you think is gonna have good mid bass, you put it in your bike, and then you buy a set of loud grills that have a compression horn or you cut them into your fairing, or you replace a gauge, and you point these at your head, and then you call me and you say, hey, I need to get more bass, because all I hear is treble, and then you start telling me about your design. And I would really like to talk to a lot of you and stop you before you do that, because there are very few cases where I think this is the solution to better sound. It's a great speaker, it has its place, but I think in the average rider bike, it does not. So, kind of a recap. Uh, the, we get a question all the time, can I hear rear speakers going down the road. And I would tell you this, the reason that so many people ask that is somebody's told them you can't. And the people that can't hear the rear speakers have a couple things going on. First off, placement of those rear speakers could be bad. We find replacement lids that hang the speaker low and fire them straight up, make it really hard to hear your rear speakers. We also find that not properly powering your rear speakers really is a big, big problem. A lot of people are running smaller amplifiers, way less than 100 watts RMS per channel, and then they're not setting it up where you're gonna hear those rear speakers. We have to have a speaker in the back that's efficient, as efficient as the front, or we have to have more power going to that rear speaker. But I will tell you, when rear speakers are installed correctly, when they're amplified correctly, when they're in the right locations, when they're done correct, they add a ton to your sound, and they add that enveloping surround sound, and they add that mid-bass response. Now, and I would tell you, if you want to hear your rear speakers, do not do lowers. When you put four speakers firing at your head, you're not going to hear your rear speakers anymore. So forget the idea that lowers are better. If you want lower speakers, I'll sell them to you. We do them all the time. You'll watch video after video where we do installs, but we do what our customers ask for. And I would love to spend the time to talk to every one of you in person and go over system design and what's going to sound best on your bike. But the fact is there's one of me. 
and I talk to about 100 people a day. There's way more than 100 of you that call every day. And our team is awesome. And they are really good at what they do and they're very, very well informed and they guide you in the right directions. But the fact is there's only so many of us and we can only talk to so many of you. And that's why this video was put together so I can talk to you personally. I can tell you about system design. I can tell you that spending more money is not always better. Adding that second amp, adding that DSP, adding horn tweeters, adding lowers, all of these things tend to add to the cost. They add to the complexity, they add to the ability to have failures, and they don't necessarily add to the overall quality of sound that you're looking for. So you guys that do two speakers understand when you buy a system from Volunteer Audio with just two speakers, we always use a four channel amp. We go ahead and set it up for rear speakers because we know your next step is you're gonna want a more full sound. We do that when we add in our six by nines or our tour pack speakers. We're thinking about it ahead of time because we don't want you to start over. So when you add those speakers, we're also normally using four ohm speakers so that one four channel amp can run up to eight speakers. So you guys that have the ultra limiteds or the road glide limiteds, maybe you've already done the tour pack speakers. They sound great, but you're like, you know, what's the next step? What can I do more? I would tell you, add some six by nines to your lids. Properly mounted, they're not gonna leak. Properly mounted, you're going to hear them. They're gonna have excellent mid bass and they're gonna add to that rear fill. They're gonna add to the quality of sound and you're gonna be in love with your audio system by adding those additional six by nines. You guys have done four speakers with the six by nines. Think about adding a tour pack, but when you do it, make sure you buy good pods to add speakers to your King tour pack. Harley sells the best ones I've found yet. They're ported into it. A lot of the stuff you'll find on other websites such as Amazon, they're just not built right, they're not ported, and that little bitty sealed enclosure has the same problem that the lowers do. If it's not ported in the tour pack, you're not gonna add mid-range, you're only gonna add treble, and it's not gonna sound great. So I want you to have the best sounding system. That doesn't always mean I need to sell you more equipment. That doesn't always mean that you need to buy more speakers to get that. So I hope this has been informative and it helps you. Obviously, we make more money when you buy more equipment. If you buy more speakers, everybody needs an eight speaker system. And not exactly. I think most of you'd be better off with a six speaker system or a four speaker system because when we add those additional speakers in the lowers, most of the time it's going to do detrimental things that you didn't think about. And I want to try to get some of that out of the way. Now, there are always exceptions to the things I've said today. There are people who tune really well with DSPs that can really change the way and the tone of the system and they can put speakers in places they really don't have to be, but they're changing the tone to make it sound better. That can happen. I'm not saying that other people are doing this wrong. I'm telling you from our experience, this works out to cost you less money and have a better sounding system for most people in the genres they listen to. Now, you, let's say you listen to modern country, you listen to hip hop, you listen to jazz. All of those things benefit from more rear speaker and more mid bass. We smile when we hear the bass of a system hit. And the more we have of that, the more enjoyable it is and the happier we are. And we want you happy. We were very, very blessed to win the Customer Choice Award. Our customers called in and voted for us more than any other shop in the country. And we're so happy about that. And it's because we really care about you. We want you happy. We want you to get the best system. We want the best end result. And we want to take the time to talk to every one of you. So if you got more questions that maybe I didn't answer in this video, Maybe you got some comments you want below, put them, put them in the, the text below. So leave me a little link down there. Tell me what you want to say, whether well, this is Facebook or YouTube, they call it different things, but you can message me below and I'll be very quick to try to answer that. And let, let's be nice. Let's not call out other people. Let's not call out certain brands. There are a lot of good brands. There's a lot of other ways. I'm telling you what my experience is. Everybody has opinions and I just want to make sure that our opinion is out there for you to be able to check out. And understand, if you got questions about it, you want more details on this, call me, 1-844-30-AUDIO. I talk to a lot of you every day. Rick does a great job. Samantha does a great job. You're going to talk to somebody on our team that does this day in and day out. They talk to people that are happy and unhappy with systems. We know what you want and what you don't want. We also know what we offer and how to design it to meet your needs. So give us a call. Check out volunteeraudio.com. We have great pre-packaged speaker systems that we know we're gonna make you happy. Whether it's two speakers, four speakers, six speakers, or eight speakers, this video was made to help guide you through that process. I don't just wanna tell everybody, you need eight speakers, you need the biggest amp I sell. That is not true. We need to get something that is good for your scenario that makes you happy, and that is not always doing more. All right, thank you so much for watching. 
I hope you reach out to us. I hope you comment below. If you've had a great experience with Volunteer Audio, comment below. Tell us about your system and what you like about it. If you've ever had a bad experience, reach out to me. I want to talk to you because I want to make it right. We don't have a lot of those. There's a few people every now and then that have a problem. And, and a lot of times there are things that are out of our control, but I'd love to talk to you, try to make sure that you're happy with it. Overall, we, our whole goal, no matter what, is that you're satisfied and that you're taken care of. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video. It's going to move it up in search results. Like it on Facebook. It's going to allow other people to see it there too. And definitely subscribe to our channel or follow us on Facebook. When you subscribe, you're going to get the latest in Harley Audio. I'm going to tell you about new products as they come out. I'm going to show you how to install them. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of them and how to use them properly. We're going to give segments like this where we just talk about design maybe. Or maybe we talk about some of the benefits of some new features or some new things before anybody else has them out. So you're going to want to subscribe so you're always in the know. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, God bless.